Have you ever felt misunderstood or like there was no one who really got you? I can guarantee you, you're in really good company. <laughs> you're definitely not alone. And there's a reason for everything. What's up y'all, it's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about the real things because it's real, honest, vulnerable, hard conversations that build relationship, that bring us into deeper intimacy with God. And this week in particular has been quite the challenge <laughs> and quite the test of how much I believe that. Because the truth is, just because I know the value of it doesn't mean that it's easy for me. Just because I encourage you to be real doesn't mean that it's automatically easy for me to be real. It's just as difficult for me to be vulnerable because I'm human, because you're human. We fear being vulnerable out of self-protection, self-defense, and yet, if Jesus is our example, he laid down those quote-unquote rights, knowing that God, his Father, would be his protector, his defender, his shelter, his provider. And also, he did that to demonstrate what real, true love does. It self-sacrifices. It allows itself to be hurt if it means showing unconditional love to others, if it means honoring someone's heart above your own, knowing, of course, that your heart is always in the hands of the one who made it. And I'm sure we could actually have an entire conversation based on just that. And I made other videos. One of them in particular is called Real Love Sucks go check it out and I'm gonna move on. Vulnerability is never easy. I think it gets a little bit easier or you perceive it as getting easier the more you grow in trust in a relationship. And using God as an example again, it's a lot easier to be open and honest with God knowing that I can trust him, knowing that he knows what I'm gonna think before I think it or say before I say it and he loves me anyway. He still chose to die for me, just as he sees your thoughts and hears your words and sees your heart and still chose to die for you anyway and still loves you just as much today as he ever did. So yeah, I think it does get a little easier the more you trust someone, but that doesn't mean that they don't have the ability to hurt you. You're just trusting that they will choose not to. But when we're talking about human relationships, vulnerability is really difficult because we're human, we make mistakes, and that's why I am so grateful to have Jesus who lived a perfect life as our example, not to hold us to perfection, but see what is possible to grow up into and to know that we can always trust him, even if other people let us down. And he can relate to us because even though he lived love perfectly, there was no one else on earth who could love him perfectly in return. Not a single other person could return his perfect love. So Jesus always, though fully God, he was fully man and felt and experienced everything that we feel and experience. And yet he was without sin. He was still perfect and he loved perfectly. When he was betrayed numerous times, he still loved. When he gave and gave and gave and there was nothing that could be given in return that would reciprocate his giving, he loved anyway. When he laid down his life, no one went to the cross with him. And if anyone knows what it's like to be misunderstood, Jesus understands. His own disciples misunderstood him. He spoke in parables to make concepts of heaven more understandable. But then he also had to explain the parables because his friends were so dense. <laughs> and yet he loved them perfectly anyway. And time and time again, when Jesus asked his closest friends, the ones who did life with him and walked with him every day, to go out and do what he did and they failed and they fell short of it, he may have rebuked them saying, you of little faith, but then immediately sent them out to do the same thing with clear instruction and nothing but love. Y'all, Jesus is always calling us higher, but that doesn't mean he's calling us to an easy life. When he says, pick up your cross and follow me, he's saying, look at what I demonstrated. Look at what I endured. This is the way to freedom. This is the way to lead people. This is the way to greatness. And every single day, Jesus was misunderstood, was mocked, was betrayed, was let down, and he could have been utterly depressed and disappointed. And there were times where he very much showed his emotion towards those who were rejecting the life and the abundance and the freedom that he had for them. Like when he said, 
Jerusalem, how I've longed to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks. He grieves for us humans misunderstanding him when all he wants to do is bring us into new life, into a new way of thinking, into freedom, into salvation, so that we can live lives like him and do everything he did and greater things. And yet we just want the handout without the cost. We want heaven on earth but we wanna sit on our couch and watch Netflix while it's delivered to us. There are a lot of really hard things that Jesus calls us to, like this journey that I'm on, for example. This was something I opted in for. I said yes to this. Granted, I thought it was gonna be over way earlier, and I've said that a million times, but the fact that I'm still in it is because I know he's doing something in it and he would never invite me into something that he didn't have a plan for. And I know he's doing a lot of good through it. And I know that he's doing something amazing in my heart that I can't even see or understand yet through it. And any day I could choose by my own free will to get myself out of it. And I hesitate to say this because it requires a whole lot of faith that frankly, I'm not sure that I have because he's stretching me in it, but I don't know if I have it fully yet. So this is a risk, but that's how you spell faith. <laughs> If God is my deliverer, if God promises to rescue us, if he is our defender, if what I'm going through is something that Jesus faced on a regular basis, and if I can honestly say that I'm completely surrendered to whatever he wants to do, repenting of anything he reveals in my heart, moving forward, seeking him, digging into intimacy with him, then I'm right where I need to be. The same goes for you, but I'm not saying to do nothing. When things get really hard, be honest with God and be honest with yourself. Journal it if you have to, but invite people in at risk of being misunderstood. And you guys, I have been misunderstood on a daily. People do not understand what I'm doing. Shoot, there's sometimes that I don't even understand what I'm doing, but I trust. I trust the one who invited me into this. And I see what he's teaching me, even if I don't understand the full picture yet. So invite people into it. Invite people into your struggle. We are called to bear one another's burdens. We are not supposed to do this alone. And Jesus, day after day, invited his friends, his disciples, his inner circle into what he was doing. Even when they had no clue what he was talking about, he still shared his heart with them. He shared what he was going to go through with them. He told them things that he knew they wouldn't believe. He gave them the choice to leave or to continue following. He told them what they'd have to give up. He told them they would be blessed, but he also told them the cost. He's asking us to do the same thing. Count the cost. And if he is worth it to you, don't give up. Preach the gospel to your heart every day. Declare thanksgiving for things that you haven't seen come to fruition yet. Jesus, I thank you for the house you have for me, for the family you have for me, for every provision that I have not yet seen because you are faithful. And when your feelings are lying to you, even when those lies seem very true, this is where it's really important to know the truth, which is the word of God. If you know the truth, that is in the Bible, you won't fall for the lie. But when your feelings lie to you, you stand on the truth. And the more you can do that, the quicker you can stand on the truth in the middle of the lies and the feelings that are trying to get you off course, trying to get you to give up, trying to get you to chase some quick escape that would essentially move you further from that intimacy, from that intimate place with God. Those easy, simple sins that seem like nothing at the time and then build over time into something bigger. Stand on the truth. The more you stand on the truth, the stronger you become so that the trials that come in the future won't nearly have as much power over you as they used to because now you know who you are and you know what the truth is because your feelings aren't supposed to rule you. You are supposed to rule your feelings. In my newsletter I sent out on Monday, I talked about how stress is actually what makes us stronger. And full disclosure, I had to read my own email multiple times after it sent out. And it honestly encouraged me because I wrote that out of a place of needing the advice, needing the wisdom, needing that truth myself. But it's true. Stress, the right amount of stress, is something our body needs in order to become stronger and adapt to a greater threshold. And then there will be a little more stress or a little more resistance a little more strain, a little more weight, a little more pressure, and your threshold will grow again. Your threshold, your strength will increase. The Bible talks about those who can be trusted with little will be the ones who are trusted with more. Now, if strength is produced by struggle and stress, then the strongest ones, the ones able to hold the most weight, the ones able to stand up under the most 
pressure are the ones who over time have been trusted with a little and a little more and a little more, but it's been a continuous struggle and it may not seem fair and you may not understand what you're going through and few, if any, will understand what you're allowing yourself to go through or what God is allowing in your life. But the truth is he's increasing your threshold to hold something greater. He's testing your faith which is more valuable than gold. And gold can be destroyed and your faith cannot. So even when it feels like you have very little faith, and I said this to God yesterday, I don't think I have enough faith, but that's not true. I have more faith than I did the day before because I choose to pick up this cross every single day and allow him to teach me and prepare me for greater responsibility, greater weight, greater pressure. So whatever it is you're going through, I invite you to thank him for it. And when it hurts the most, praise him for what you don't understand, but he does. Thank him that he is good. Thank him that he is constantly pursuing your heart. Thank him for his incredible love and how he proved it once by giving you his son on the cross, for giving you his son's life, lived in perfect love for everything that he had to experience while he was loving perfectly among imperfectly loving people for all the misunderstanding that he experienced and continues to experience. Thank him that because of everything that he went through for you, you can have this relationship. You have the benefit of growing up into the kind of leadership that changes the world. You have the benefit knowing and being known by the creator of the universe who is daily inviting you into deeper intimate relationship with him and one last thing and that is that noah's ark has been coming up a lot lately in my own quiet time and prayer and prophetic words people have given me and i finally went back and reread the account of noah and i'm encouraged to know that this man who was so obedient to what god called him to that made zero sense to anyone, including his family, this obedience was the very thing that became the salvation for him and many others when the floods came. Now, thank God for the rainbow, which is the symbol of the covenant God made with us that he would never again flood the earth. But I do know that more persecution is coming. It is on the horizon and God is preparing leaders to stand up under it. God is inviting us into a daily yes of obedience to learn how to follow him, learn how to trust him, learn how to be examples like he was so that when things do happen, when struggles and storms do come, we'll be ready and we'll be able to be an example of Jesus love to those who are caught in the storm. Y'all, I don't wanna do this anymore. I'm tired. I need to not do this anymore, but his strength is perfect in our weakness. And as long as he is using me, as long as he is teaching me and growing me, as long as he's inviting me to to say yes to another day, as long as he's the same Jesus that gave me everything, I have to say yes. All that I have is his. Even if you don't understand, <laughs> that's okay. He understands me and I'm going to continue to do what he's calling me to do. You guys, thank you for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and subscribe to my channel. If you want to support what I'm doing here, I would be forever grateful. You can become a monthly contributor to my Patreon community, or you can do a one-time donation with Venmo or the Cash App, and those links are in the description box below. I love you. I'm praying for you. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I want to know what your favorite movie is and why. Tell me in the comments below.